Hey guys and welcome to Vegan Beauty Girl. My name is Nicole and today we are starting a brand new series on the channel. It's going to be a vegan SPF review series. So wearing SPF is definitely something I've been aware I should be doing for years. Um, for the like, last year I've been making an effort with it and getting better at it. But it's only in like, the last two months that I've started wearing SPF every single day. Rain, shine, summer, winter. It's actually only been winter but like you get the picture. It's important to wear SPF every day. I think it's very fair to say though that not every SPF is created equal and it's one of the more expensive skincare essentials so it can be really frustrating when you spend money on one that just does not work for you which is why i thought it'd be really helpful to start this series so that i can try out some spfs for you guys and help you make better purchases basically if there are any vegan cruelty free spfs in particular that you guys want to see me review please do leave suggestions down below i already have a few in mind but if there are any spfs that are particularly popular i'll really prioritize testing those ones out in this series i will be sharing all the important information like SPF factors but I will not be doing any like high tech tests. I will really be focusing on what they're like to apply, how they are to wear, looking at that sort of stuff. As always I'll be sharing any extra information about like certifications, details around like them being cruelty free and vegan and also any extra information about like sustainability and other ethics. We are kicking off this series with a review of the Pi British Summertime SPF. First off I really want to explain what I look for in SPF, what are the most important things to me. Obviously it's essential that it's vegan and cruelty free. I also would prefer my product to have no white cast and it's also very important to me that the SPF I choose does not break out my skin and that is definitely something that's put me off wearing SPF in the past. I've really expected it to make my skin break out. I worked really hard to get my skin a lot clearer and I did not want SPF to ruin that and yeah you can wear SPF every day without having breakouts and obviously the more sustainable the better as well. Let's get into some more details about the Pi SPF. After that we will go back in time and I'll show you what it's like to apply. I am wearing it right now though FYI. So this this product is SPF 30 and it protects against UVA and UVB rays which is obviously an essential of an SPF. SPF 30 is kind of like the lowest I would go personally. I think for some people they like an SPF 50 but this is good for me. But this formula is very friendly and it also has blue light and infrared protection as well which is great. Certification wise we have the Vegan Society, we have Soil Association Natural and we have the Leaping Bunny on the back. So those are three very good certifications and price wise it is £29.40 milliliters and it is specially formulated for like sensitive eczema prone skin and that's kind of in line with what Pi do in general. All of their formulas are very much sensitive skin which is why I was drawn to this one in the first place because I was really looking to introduce an SPF into my skincare routine which wouldn't create breakouts and it's been a really good one to start with because it hasn't given me any breakouts. It's proven to me that SPF does not cause breakouts. I may try some in the future that do lead to breakouts but not every SPF will do that. I also want to go a little bit more detail about what the Soil Association Natural Cosmos certification means. It's just important to know that in the beauty industry there are so many unregulated terms and whenever a product boasts that it's natural it really does not mean anything. It's got no likely legal ties to it whereas a certification for natural does mean something. So for any product that has this Cosmos natural certification it means at least 90% of the ingredients have to be of natural origin. There are no endangered plant species used, no GM ingredients and also no synthetic dyes, colours or fragrances. Also just want to mention quickly that this product was gifted to me last year. I did not promise them any review, I did not promise them any content so all opinions are my own. Okay so now let's go on to application. Before we get started it's really important that we kind of discuss my skin type just so that when I'm giving feedback about the product you kind of know how much of a pinch of salt to add to my feedback. So I do have like combination skin. I can be quite dry, quite oily and I'm also reasonably sensitive to fragrance so I typically try and avoid fragrance from my skincare because fragrance can make me break out and obviously it's quite important to note that I am white. I have pretty pale skin right now particularly in the winter so when we're discussing white cast that's definitely something we need to take into consideration. Let's get started. On the very back it does say to massage two fingertips size amounts evenly into face and neck, apply after moisturiser and before sun exposure, reapply as needed. So sometimes I do wear moisturiser beneath this and other times I do not. And here you can see just kind of like how white this is. I don't normally put this much on my face <laughs> to begin with, I normally kind of like build it up. I would say it's reasonably fast absorbing. I feel like the majority of it sinks in really nicely to your skin. It doesn't leave as much of a like white residue as you'd expect. It is really nice and gentle on the skin. Like I mentioned, it was really important to me that my SPF didn't make me break out. And this definitely does not make me break out, which I really enjoy. 
gonna get a little extra i will say i do really only like wearing this under makeup although it mostly sinks in it does leave the faintest white cast on my skin tone so that's not great but yeah comfort level when it comes to wearing it i feel like if i think about it i can tell i have an spf on i can feel that extra layer so it definitely doesn't feel like invisible or like not at all there but it doesn't feel uncomfortable either i don't really notice it it's only when i stop and think about it i'm like yeah it does feel a bit different it does feel like there's a protective layer but it doesn't feel crazy different yeah so you've got the slight white cast although i have seen a lot worse it's not great um, but i do love that it is formulated for sensitive skin i love that it hasn't made me break out and as far as like a base for makeup i do find it like slightly mattifying not hugely mattifying like my t-zone where i get quite greasy i find that it really reduces that over the course of a day versus if i weren't wearing it so i do like that about it i don't find it so mattifying that it bothers my dry bits but where i get oil it helps kind of keep that in balance so it is quite a nice base for makeup and really for the most part i do feel like it has sunk in there it's just that slight slight white cast which i think just makes my face a notch paler than the rest of my body i don't know how much you can tell yeah it's a bit annoying so I guess the big question is, would I buy this again? To be honest, probably. I absolutely love Pi as a brand. I love their ethics. I love all the certifications that this product has. Those are so important. I think it gives me such great protection against UVA, UVB. We've got SPF 30, we've got infrared, we've got blue light, like really good protection there. And it's done all that without making my skin break out or causing any irritation. So that is wonderful. However, that slight white cast does bother me a bit. I don't like the little pale tint it gives me. And I'd also quite like to find something a bit cheaper. This isn't necessarily something I feel like I could afford every month. It kind of depends on what other purchases I've got going on. But £29 on SPF is quite a bit for me. I would be open to trying other products and hopefully finding a product which is kind of similar um, with less white cast and at a lower price point. So it is very good that I'm doing this review series to see if I can find any products which are kind of cheaper but similarly good. I think this has really set a very good standard, a very good baseline for the rest of the series. I do think it is a reasonably good SPF, especially in like the natural category. So there is a good chance that I will be returning to this, but yeah, for now I'll be trying out different SPF. So please do hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed with this video particularly if you're excited for more spf reviews don't forget to leave any suggestions down below i also want to thank my patrons for all their support without them i wouldn't be able to make these videos so thank you guys so much if you are looking to support the work i do here on vegan beauty girl i have tiers starting as low as two pound a month which is kind of like a magazine subscription so if you do enjoy the content i create i would really appreciate the support but yeah thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and until next time bye